Benita, just so you know, nobody can hear you. You're muted right now. There I am. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, this is our sixth session of uh, our um, virtual orientation for families. And um, today's topic is residential life. And uh, before we get started with our guests, I'm going to um, go over the schedule for August 17th for any of the families who are joining us for the first time. Uh, welcome. And um, when you you've probably received an email uh, today or will in the next day or so with a time slot your student will receive that at your csum.edu email uh, it'll have a time slot for you to arrive on campus we highly uh, recommend coming a few minutes early parking in lot o and you will be directed to head to our physical education and aquatic center um, once you're in there, you will get a check-in. Um, you'll be able to check in, get your welcome packet, um, and the students uh, with you, the student with you will be going into the gym, and there they will receive their initial issue of uniforms, um, and the families will be invited to go to a separate area where you'll meet some of the people you've met here on Zoom or um, those who provide services to your students um, and you'll get a chance to connect with them. Once that whole uh, pickup of uniform is complete, you will be going back to your car, which was parked in lot O, and you will drive over to your res hall where <clears throat> you will come, get out of the car. You'll have lots of help from uh, our residential uh, folks, as well as our orientation leaders. Um, the person driving the car will have to remain in the car, turn around and go back and park um, on lower campus. Uh, lots A, B, D are all available for you to park. Uh, you could go back to lot O if that's where you wanna, uh, wanna that, if that's where you find a spot. Um, the, the lower campus lots start to fill up. Um, so if you're later in the day, you might need to go to O, <clears throat> excuse me. Once uh, that is done, you can meet up with your student and the rest of your family in the res halls. There will be a shuttle that will take you around uh, to the res hall or other parts, parts of the campus. One shuttle that's making its rounds um, on that morning or, or that, that day. Um, around three o'clock, we'll bring you back down to um, the quad where we will do a practice for the capping ceremony and um, there will be a welcome by the leadership for our families. That's what the day is gonna look like. You'll have some free time after that. Uh, we do request that um, you uh, try out your uniforms, your students try out their uniforms when they're in their room. And if any exchanges are needed, um, those need to happen between, between 4 and 6.30 right in PIAC. So that's what the day is going to look like. Uh, we have a lunch prepared for you on that day. So Marketplace will be open and they're doing a fabulous lunch special for, uh, for the families. I think the cost is $16 um, and um, the the bistro might be open and we'll also have the bookstore open for you. With that, um, a couple of housekeeping things, please keep your devices on mute uh, while the, the presenters are sharing their information with you. Um, you can type in your questions in chat, which I will read out later. Presenters, if you will uh, refrain from typing in responses in, um, in chat, it makes it very confusing when I'm getting through the questions. So hold off your answers until the question reading begins after your presentation. Um, that's everything I have. And with that, I will start with whoever is first on my screen and that is Matt. So introductions and then popcorn over to your next colleague. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Vanita. Um, so my name is Matthew Donovan. I'm the residence life coordinator at Upper Residence Hall, where actually most of the first year students are going to be staying. Been here for a couple of years now, having a great time. And I guess I'll send it over to my next person now, Amanda, who she might not say herself, 
but she's a soccer superstar and she also has had the opportunity to live in both of the first year communities and was an RA in both of them. So what else you got to say, Amanda? Yeah, I mean, Matt pretty much introduced me, but um, I'm Amanda Carvalho. I actually graduated last year, so I'm kind of an odd one in here. Um, but I lived in Upper my first year, and then I was also an RA in McAllister and Upper, which we'll talk about, um, which are our two first-year halls. So I'm more of the student perspective, um, any questions from the RA perspective, that type of thing. Um, I'll pop one over. Uh, Amanda <laughs> dropped the ball, so I'll go ahead. I'll take over. Don't even worry about my job. <laughs> uh, my name is Tim Westmoreland. I'm the director of Residence Life. Um, I'm just wrapping up um, the first year here. Um, so I kind of do a lot of the behind the scenes boring stuff while the other three here, or really the other two, um, do more of the day to day and actual running of the place. More or less, a lot of my stuff is just kind of like the long term planning policy. Like I said, just a whole a lot of the boring staring at the screen kind of deal. Um, and then every once in a while, I get out of my cave and get to hang out with students. So, and then I will turn it over to Melinda. Hi, everyone. I'm Melinda Balfour. I'm the lead Res Life coordinator for the office. I'm also the Res Life coordinator for McAllister Res Hall. So if you're going to be in that building, I'll be your Res Life coordinator. I also work on room assignments and I manage the front office as well. So thank you, everyone. These are our uh, rock stars. Melinda is uh, our veteran. She's been here uh, many years, and our newest member is Tim. Um, so the audience today is families, and um, if you can share what you do day to day, your interactions with students, and if you have any details like important dates, uh, important tips for families. Uh, this is your chance to get it across to them and we'll keep it um, going for a few minutes before we start taking Q&A questions and then um, getting answers from you. So a uh, little bit more meat on, on what you do. Um, I'll kind of jump into that as well as how we can get some more answers when all this is said and done. Um, like, as I kind of said, a lot of the boring stuff on my end, when it comes to uh, how it interacts with the students and what I do, a lot of what I do is working with the coordinators and the RAs to kind of determine what the community needs, what are some things that need to get addressed, what's, where are we looking at to be long term, um, obviously things like how does housing, uh, how are we affected by the opt-in, and what does that look like whenever students are, um, trying to find a place to go for summer because their plans have changed. And a lot of that is just um, that background stuff. And then I also do more of the boring things in terms of uh, I work with other offices. So things like working with Title IX, I work very closely with um, uh, the Dean's office. I work very closely with accessibility and disability services offices. So basically whatever I can do to kind of leverage our department into other places on campus, because a lot of students utilize the RAs first and foremost as their reference piece. And so whatever I can do to help build those bridges is a lot of what I'm doing behind the scenes. And then uh, Matt and Melinda, along with their staff, and Amanda will be able to give you some more insight on that, um, are the ones who actually help relay most of that information, if not steer what our year is going to be like. So um, the other, one of the, the tips and tricks that I always give, and it's super boring, but super easy, is if you ever have a question for us, housing at csum.edu, that is the inbox. Because if you email anyone directly, you most likely will get an answer. Um, but the housing inbox is seen by a couple of different people. Um, and most importantly, it's seen by Melinda, who knows absolutely everything. So um, that would be the best way to get a hold of us for stuff, as well as the website was kind of redone not too long ago. And so if there's ever information that you're looking for, or if you're looking at it and have looked at it and thought, why isn't this here? They should have posted blank. Go ahead and uh, send the housing uh, inbox a message about that, and I can make sure to get that stuff updated as well. But the easiest and best way to get a hold of us almost at all times is the housing inbox so we can track, follow up, and make sure you get what, uh, what either you or your student needs. And I will turn it over to Matt. Thank you, Tim. Um, so something that I wanted to get into is one of the most unique things about residence life is while a lot of the other departments around campus may do a typical nine to five, we're actually 24-7, 365. 
So that's from the professional tier, that's Tim, myself, Melinda. One of us is on call 24 seven available at any time, should anything arise, whether it be a crisis or some kind of maintenance thing or really anything. But during the academic year, that's actually extended to what we call RAs. That's what um, Amanda used to be. Um, we also do this year, we also have a um, senior resident advisor. We actually just recently switched from residence hall advisors to now we call them resident advisors. But through the academic year, 24 seven, we have coverage. During the day, we have some um, front desk assistants that can answer main questions. But when we shipped into the evenings, the RAs take care of that business. And in addition, in addition to holding down the fort, so to speak, overnight, the RAs are also responsible for holding programming. And programming is different kinds of events, activities that help just foster a sense of community here and get everyone connected. Um, while today we're only talking about two of the residence halls, the first year communities, we actually have four residence halls. And in a semester, residence life does about 54 to 60 programs a semester. There'll be something in each hall every week what they do, some individual programs with RAs, there's bigger community programs. So that's a lot of what um, Amanda used to do is organize that kind of stuff, advertise that stuff, get our students together. Um, and on top of that, our, our RAs are also responsible for doing one-on-one -on -one meetings with their residents. And Amanda, do you wanna talk a little bit about that and what, why we do that and why that's important? Yeah, so um, pretty much from day one, uh the RAs are the ones that are with the students the whole time. So from moving in all of their boxes to helping them move back out at the end of the year, um, we're with them what feels like 24 seven, especially in the freshman hall. Um, so what the one on one meetings are for is honestly just a check in and make sure everybody's doing well. Uh, college is hard. It's really stressful, especially here. Academics are hard. Um, so mental health is a huge thing we really want to look out for, especially as RAs. We want to make sure everybody in the hall is, you know, doing okay. Um, so in the beginning of the year, we'll have, you know, a one-on-one -on -one check in on them, just basic questions like how has, you know, your first few weeks been? What do you like? What don't you like? Um, kind of events that we run what would you like to see in the hall um, I had a lot of people being like oh I want to paint oh we want to have you know video game contests that type of thing um, and then we'll do another one and that's another check-in so I'll usually ask questions like oh how did this go you know something we talked about out before. Um, and it's really just a good way to get to know each resident. Um, it does get a little overwhelming sometimes when you have a lot. So it's nice to have that like one on one conversation. Um, but I would say the biggest thing is we just want to check in on everybody and see how we can help. Um, and if I can't help directly, that's when you kind of give out to all the rest of the resources um, on campus. So um, I would say RAs are definitely there because they know a lot about the campus, know a lot about the housing, um, and especially the resources uh, that are there, whether it's tutoring, whether, whether it's mental health services, um, or our bosses that are here. For me, I'll just jump in real quick. So um, I work in a very similar capacity as Matt. So I have a team of RAs and I help manage the day-to-day -day for McAllister Residence Hall. But I also oversee the front desk as well. So I'll do a plug. We are currently hiring student assistants for our front office. So if you are interested in working on campus, feel free to check out our student employment page and apply for the front desk assistant for the Res Life office. Um, some other things that I'll mention, um, as you prepare for fall semester and prepare for move-in day, um, just make sure that you're checking your Cal Maritime email account. Um, everything now, since you are matriculated and you're going to be here, all the official communication from the school will now go to your CSUM account. So make sure you transition from your personal and make sure you're always checking your school account and make sure you're reading emails. Um, that would be my tidbit for the future is just making sure that you read through the information, you understand what's going on. And then like Tim said, if you have any questions about anything, you can always reach out to us either via email, your RA, the Res Life coordinator, the director of Res Life, um, something that's unique um, that you may not be aware of, but all of the professional Res Life staff members, we also live on campus as well. So you'll see us during the traditional business hours, but you'll see us after hours as well. We also eat in the dining center. We have a meal plan as well. You'll see us in the programs and you'll also see us after hours because we're a part of that professional duty rotation like Matt mentioned. So you'll see us kind of 24 7 365 as well thank you so much um i um also want to mention that um today we have we're joined by um 
Stephanie Francis, who is our Director for Career Services, and I wanted to give her a shout out and an opportunity to introduce herself, Stephanie. Thank you, Vanita. Um, my name is Stephanie Francis. I'm the Director of Career Services. And you may be wondering, well, what, is, what do you have to do with, with housing? Well, you want your, your graduates to afford some nice housing, um, you know, when they graduate. So um, we're, we're here to um, help them the moment they begin, they step foot on this campus to position themselves to find the career and the skill, develop the skills to get the position that they want, not just get a job, but get the career that they want. Um, and so we actually partner with housing and the other campus departments to get our services and support to your students. So I wanted to put a face to the department and um, and really welcome all of you. And of course, if, there, if you have any questions, um, you know, I'm gonna be here too, um, to answer questions uh, as well, um, but you know how to reach me um, and just know that we are here to support your student success. Thank you very much, Stephanie. I um, appreciate you. I um, should have mentioned it at the top of the hour, but um, welcome. All right, um, back to housing folks. Anything else you want to add before we start taking questions? And families, um, if you have any questions for our presenters, please feel free to add them to chat. Um, and I'll give the floor back to our housing staff. Uh, two things I do want to mention because we get asked about quite a bit um, is Thanksgiving, uh, winter break, um, just break periods in general. Um, traditionally for um, the winter break as well as summer break, the expectation is that all students will be returning home or, or going somewhere, I assume doing something awesome. Um, so uh, for winter break specifically, we will look at doing housing options under uh, specific circumstances as we get closer to that. Usually early, mid-November, we'll start reaching out to students and trying to gauge what their need is. Um, and then when we get to summer break, the expectation is that everyone is doing some sort of um, either on a Golden Bear or commercial cruise or doing something along those lines. So we actually do not have a traditional full on summer housing program. Now, we will never kick somebody to the curb and say, figure it out. Good luck. We will always work with the students and, and see what what options we can come up with. Um, but it would be something to consider as we get closer to those break periods. If the plan isn't to go somewhere or be on a ship or be doing something. You need to be, your student needs to be in, communicator, in communication with us so we can figure out what that, what that game plan looks like. Um, and then another thing I always hear about is students thoughts. And I don't, I don't know if there has been a session on this and if there has, I'm sorry. Um, but we do get a lot of hesitation from incoming students about talking to counselors in general or just voicing mental health concerns. And so we will be the first ones to tell you how important that is to make sure you have those kind of conversations. Our RAs are fantastic at being that referral source, knowing who to talk to, where to go, um, where the location is. I mean, we'll, we'll get down to the nitty gritty of, of walking you over if that's what we have to do. Um, so we've had parents call before because they've been concerned because you know, they just don't know who to reach out to or how. And so that's kind of what I was talking about earlier in the sense of we're connected to almost every department on campus, Stephanie as well. I mean, one of my RAs last year had a, had a, a program where he had somebody come out and talk about, I believe it was, uh, they were talking about options for like right after you graduate, how to make sure your resume looks a certain way and how you have those actual conversations with recruiters and, you know, res live, we just, we just put the bill for the food, you know, so we do things like that with almost every department, some sort of connection to them. Um, but I do know that counseling is one that is almost always a boogeyman of some sort. Uh, people are just afraid to say something specifically in the maritime industry because um, they're worried it will get them in trouble or something will get out and this, that, and the other. Um, and so that's why I bring it up here is because you will, you'll see a ramp up, or at least we do. It's almost always the first week or so, it's who is this when they're looking at their RA and like two weeks in, they've told their RA absolutely everything about their lives. And it's like, that's awesome. We love that you trust your RA like that. But we actually have somebody who literally 
dedicated their career to helping you do this. And that's why they're in this office. So we're going to take you over there so you can get some, you know, licensed help, not just uh, an RA who's sitting here saying, I don't know either. So that's the good news with that is, is we do a little bit of everything, but I do know there is a lot of hesitation when it comes to that mental health piece. So if that's something I can definitely really plug right. early on, it's having a conversation with your student about speaking out because that's the last thing you need is just holding this all together and then just having a, a rough Christmas break, if that makes sense. But yeah, so make sure you, you talk to, use your resources on campus. And if you don't know what you don't know, Talk to one of your RAs. Have your students talk to one of their RAs. They will tell you everything and then some. But that's my piece, at least. So we did. Uh, thanks, uh, Tim, for bringing that up. We did meet with um, CAPS and Student Health Center. Uh, that was the first session. And uh, if families were uh, didn't attend that, uh, what Tim's talking about is that there is concern that if you seek mental health uh, support, that it can impact your licensure. Uh, it, nothing could be farther from the truth on that. So we've spent the last 10 years busting that myth that um, any uh, contact with our um, CAPS counselors is um, confidential and doesn't impact your licensure. So uh, families need to know that as, as much as students. And we do talk about this with the students on an ongoing uh, basis. So thank you for bringing that up again. Um, I'm starting to see some questions. So if um, no one else has anything to add, I'll start reading the questions out. Okay. So the first one is a, a multi, uh, it's, a, it's a long question. And let's see if Tim, you can take that. Otherwise I will have to respond. Um, if my student has medicine mailed to him and the package needs to be signed, does it uh, have to be mailed to the health department or it can it come um, uh, to the res halls? So when it gets mailed here, it's all going to get sent to one main address and it's actually going to get delivered to the mailroom for the students. So it will never be directly taken to the student's actual living place or given to a student to sign on the spot. It all goes to a centralized location and they'll be given a mailbox, a mailbox number, all of that. So even if it gets delivered after hours or on the weekend or something like that, there will be a place that it will be uh, left at. Your student will be the one who needs to go talk to the mailroom, get their key in and uh, be checking for stuff like that. We also have Amazon lockers for things like that, I believe for like after hours as well, um, or just general use. Um, but yes, you can have almost anything delivered unless it's massively oversized and they don't have a place to put it. Then they might call you and be like, hey, come get this. I've only seen that happen once, though. Um, but there is a spot where in the mailroom, uh, uh, especially if there are any student who lives on campus will have a mailbox assigned to them. So they will have the ability to have something there. I would just make sure um, that they include their information, the mailbox number, um, and it's I believe it's just a standard 200 Maritime Academy drive, right? It's the same thing for every yeah. The 200 Maritime Academy drive um, is the, the baseline address. And then um, USPS, UPS, FedEx, all that, they know the drill on how, how to get it wherever it needs to go. Thanks, Tim. The address for mailboxes is one more cove, Vallejo 94590, not 200 Maritime Academy. Drive. Oh, I did not know that. I'm sorry. Well, I'm used to doing that. I apologize. All good. Um, I put the phone number for health services in the in chat. Um, and Aaron, if you want to make a phone call to them to see if they have any specific um, accommodations that can make that they can make if the medication needs to be kept at a certain temperature uh, and such. So just touch base with them uh, or email me at orientation at csum.edu and I can um, look into this if there's special handling needed for your package. Um, otherwise, as Tim mentioned, it goes to a central location and we have a mailroom student staff that puts it in the appropriate mailbox. And we do have some um, mailboxes that take larger packages. They're, um, they're our own boxes there, um, but we do put a lot of Amazon uh, deliveries in there. So um, how, how have rooms and roommates been assigned? And is that available for the students to know? If not, when will they be assigned? 
So yeah, so all the room assignment information, it was sent out today around 5 p.m., except for those that are a part of EOP and they're an approved off-campus student. And that's because the instructions for checking in are different. Um, but please check your CSUM account. You should have received your email. Your student should have received their email to your CSUM account. If you don't see it, please send us an email at housing at csum.edu and we'll look into it for you. But in the email, it has the name of your roommate, their email, um, your division, your roommate's major, um, your check-in time, and then different links. So if you're looking for some resources about what to bring to campus, we have a link for that. We have a campus map on there. And then we also have a link to the orientation landing page as well. Thank you, Melinda. Uh, next question is, what if you are not compatible with your roommate? Can you put in a request to, to change? Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, yeah, that's a possibility each semester. Um, somewhere in the first weeks of each semester, there'll be an opportunity to do a roommate swap. If there's somebody that you're looking to be paired up with. Um, and yeah, there's a process. Once you get a roommate, there's a roommate agreement form. They go through little like housekeeping rules with each other and they can decide on how they'd like to, you know, have little rules for themselves within their room. But yeah, that is an opportunity they will have. Thank I you. Can, I can also touch on that. Um, that's also what the RA is for. I've done a few mediations with roommates who, you know, it's just simple things that they didn't agree on, um, like having people in their room at a certain time. Um, and it's it the goal when doing stuff like that is to not have them move out. It's actually to, you know, get them to work with each other because, you know, in a job on the ship, if that's something they're going to do, you're not just going to be able to leave um, and get out. So I think the first thing we do before, you, you know, you request to change your roommate is to see what we can do to fix it. Um, and obviously, if it's a deep issue, if it's something that can be solved with just a conversation and like simple rules, then that's where the big dogs over here kind of come in and help out. Um, but definitely the goal, especially with the RA, is just to have that conversation, um, that mediation and kind of get them to a point where they agree. An overwhelming number of students do not start the conversation on their own. So that will be one of the first questions we ask them is, and what did your roommate say whenever you told them this? And it's, oh, well, I haven't told my roommate blank. So strongly advocate for you or your student to start the conversation because that will almost always be our first question from the starts. Great, thank you both. Um, can you describe the room layout in upper res hall? Is there under bed storage? Are bed risers allowed? Sure, yeah. Um, there is under the bed storage. There's two drawers under each bed. Um, bed risers wouldn't be necessary, but you are able to move the height of the bed itself or the mattress lays up and down. You just need to flip it over, use a mallet, and there's quite a few different options for height. Um, you also have storage in a cabinet, uh, like dresser style cabinet. Um, you have a desk. You have a desk that has pull out drawers and there's storage in there. More things about the room. There's you have microwave, you have a refrigerator with a little freezer. Yeah. Happy to answer any more questions about the rooms too, or the layout. I think if you're talking about the risers, if you're talking about like those little feet thing right there, I mean, you're able to do those as well. Um, but we, um, traditionally it's the bed is able to go as high as you need. Um, we haven't seen, any, at least I haven't, I haven't seen students really need to use bed risers being on that. There's um, also a YouTube video on YouTube. If you just look up Cal Maritime Residence, Upper Residence Hall Tour, it's from three years ago, but it looks the same. So um, that's also a good start. Great, thank you. Um, and just for anyone who's thinking about mallet, you don't need to bring one or send one. Uh, the housing office has that they, they will let you uh, borrow it, use it and bring it back. Um, I have a question from Amy for Amanda. What can you recommend uh, the students really need to bring? What couldn't you live without your freshman year? Honestly, I feel like you learn to live without a lot of things. You realize that a lot of stuff is just not needed. <laughs> um, I would say especially here. So I was a soccer player, so I really wasn't in my room a lot. Um, for me, it was more just comfortable stuff, like just like blankets, obviously, um, like extenders for to plug things in um little decor items to make it look you know less like bland but really you you're sharing your room with somebody it gets really overwhelming when you have a lot of stuff what i recommend is bring what you really need and then when you get here run to target go on amazon do what you need 
get what you want and what you think you're going to need. Um, just because I, I know my freshman year, I brought like so many boxes and containers of things. And then I looked around and I was like, where am I going to put it? Um, so I would definitely just bring like the bare minimum, the necessities. And then from there kind of organize your room, decorate it how you want. Um, I just found like that was the easiest. Thank you. Is renter's insurance required? I can take this one. Um, so renter's insurance is a part of the StarRes application and it is not required, it's optional. Um, it's something that most college campuses have built in as part of their housing process. Um, so it's up to you if you wanna participate in, an, in it or not. And then you also, if you do change your mind and you want to participate or you don't wanna do it anymore, uh, just send us an email at housing at csum.edu and then we can get that taken care of for you. Thank you. Does housing provide uh, support during finals, late night snacks, get togethers, fun break activities? Yeah, so we um, do stuff all throughout the year and then we will um, kind of hyper focus as we get near the end of the year of more just supportive stuff. Um, that could be anything of doing, um, you know, one of my areas last year, we did uh, all, of the, all of our residents in North wanted pancakes. That's just all they would talk about was pancakes for some reason. So we just went out, you know, the day before final started and just ended up uh, cooking pancakes for like three hours. But that's that's what they wanted. So we'll do stuff like that. So we'll provide them movie nights, ways for them just to go out and de-stress. Um, really after dead day and then whenever the finals actually start, we don't do any programming on our end because we also want our RAs focusing and taking tests and doing what they need to do. Um, but throughout the entire year, we'll be doing something to keep them busy even as we get closer to finals there's also a pretty popular program i think it's called uh cram jam is that what we call it here i don't know why i'm blanking on the name uh what's the what's the late night breakfast one finals feast finals feast every school calls it something else finals feast so we have stuff like that um but yes we will have it going all the way up until um whenever uh finals take off we just stop everything on our end once that picks up that way our student staff can do uh and study and take their finals as well. And in addition to housing, there are other uh, departments that also do some sort of pro programming um, that might work towards uh, finals. Um, next question is not related to housing, but does school have uh, does the school have transportation options to the airport in Oakland, or do, do students utilize uh, Uber? I would say Uber and friends um, is the biggest thing. The school itself doesn't have any, um, but a lot of people just ask their friends that do have a car to take them. It's like, I'll give you 20 bucks if you can take me. Um, or, I mean, Ubers come to campus a lot. So definitely those two. Thank you. When the student leaves for Thanksgiving break, how can uh, they get off campus? What if he wants to get to South Bay or North Bay bus or train or how? We are about a five minute drive from a bus terminal in Vallejo, but also we're about a five minute drive from the ferry terminal. And the ferry is straight shot to the ferry building in San Francisco. So a lot of students will utilize that. You can cross the street at the ferry building in San Francisco, get right on BART. Aside from that, I believe the closest BART station would be possibly Richmond or El Cerrito. And that's probably about a 15 minute Uber. Yes, there isn't a direct way to get to um, South Bay. Uh, but you'd have to get to San Francisco and take Caltrain or something like that, Caltrain or something. Um, how do I send care packages to my student? Using the one moral code address that I totally know now and not the 200 American. Uh, but yeah, that's all you would need to do is just put their name on it along with their mailbox number to the one moral code and then it'll get delivered um, and they can come pick it up. Thank you. Uh, how far in advance can one uh, first year students apply to be an RA their second year? Um, what we generally look at, and you, you two please obviously jump in and correct me. Um, generally, we don't do we don't hire first year students. There are very rare exceptions where we might look at someone who is in their second semester of their freshman year, but that is very very rare. We generally want students to have a good understanding of campus and the campus resources so then they can tell other students about it. Um, but we do have a pretty large uh, number of sophomore applicants and beyond. 
And so that generally is, is what we were looking for. Someone who is on campus, comfortable with the campus, who understands those resources um, before they apply. So I would say it's a, I would limit it to sophomore and beyond is probably that, that target point that you should be looking um, to apply for this job. We will also start doing all kinds of advertising beforehand. We have people who graduate, just realize this wasn't for them and any number of things. And so when those moments start picking up, my staff will start reaching out either through email, flyers, word of mouth, that whole deal. And we have a full-fledged recruitment process, everything where we walk you through what exactly we're looking for, how long it's going to take. And, you know, then we'll have some of our current RAs do Q and A's about what their year is like as an RA, what to expect, things that they, that surprised them X, Y, and Z. And so um, we give that out pretty well in advance, but our heavy recruitment really starts, I would say in February and spring is when we really start picking it up going into the next year. If I miss anything, Matt Miller, please let me know. If somebody is interested in being an RA, just something to keep mindful of is like our RAs are paying attention to what everyone's doing in the building. So go to some programs, ask RAs questions, express your interest. Because sometimes when we're looking at, we have 60 applicants. We're like, oh, this person's been talking about it. This person understands the programs, goes to all of them. They're very well behaved. These kinds of things. So just something to keep in mind. Yeah, technically you're getting interviewed all year because we're paying attention to everything. So Exactly. Good job. Thank you, Matt, uh, for putting that out. Um, should students bring a small vacuum or printer for their room? I would say vacuum, yes. Uh, printer, no. The amount of printers that were not used and I had to help move out at the end of the year was kind of concerning. And the reason is because there's, number one, a lot of stuff is digital now. And anything that you do need to print, you pay like five cents at any of the printers. Um, we have one in Upper, there's one in McAllister, and there's a bunch just scattered around campus. So printing is just not... I, I, can't, I probably can count on my hand the amount of things I had to print out while I was here. So um, that's a big thing. Vacuum, yes, but like like small. Again, you don't have a lot of space and it depends. A few of the rooms have carpet, but not a lot. Um, a lot of it is hardwood. So Swiffers are really good too. Um, just like a quick clean. Um, and if you do have like a rug or something, that's good to vacuum. I had one in my room and everybody just asked me to use mine. So um, that's also an option. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, what happens if a medical emergency occurs um, while a student is in the residence uh, hall or in in class? Um, so we work very closely with our campus police who um, obviously we would, you know, if it's an emergency, we will get EMS out here to triage and, and do everything you need to do. Um, in the meantime, um, as Matt was talking about earlier, is we always have somebody around. So the RAs pick up the phone for the evening going to the next day, but as for Matt, Melinda and I, we are on call 24 seven. So um, no matter what that phone is manned, so if we hear something, see something, we're on the way over, we're calling the police, we're calling EMS, we're calling, you know, CAPS, you know, psychological, we're calling whoever we need to call to get over there to help triage. Um, and then after the communication beyond that, well, that'll usually get pushed up to one of the admins. Um, that would be, the, be myself. Um, currently, it would be the Dean of Students, uh, Lynn and Protho Jones. Um, or the uh, vice president of student affairs. Those would be the ones who would take the next step beyond that. And that usually includes things like contacting family members and, and what needs to happen beyond all that. Um, but again, it doesn't matter what time of day, one of us three are on call. And then in the evening, that's when the RAs get an extra layer of uh, phone coverage as well. So, and if something, and if it's on main campus, Generally, it'll follow a different type of protocol, but it will usually also go through the police who will then push it up through student affairs, who will then contact families and beyond. Thank you. Um, if roommates are assigned by major and you change your major, do you change roommates? I could take this one. Typically, we don't unless there is a request to do so. Um, once we send out our room assignment information and the semester gets started, you are paired with that person until you're no longer paired with them. Um, but typically, we don't. So if you change your major and you like your roommate and you still want to be their roommate, you'll still keep the same room assignment. Uh, Melinda, um, is that also true if someone changes their division? 
Uh, yes. So even if you change divisions, again, you'll still stay with the same person you're assigned with unless you put in a request to change it. And we'll need to look into the request because in order for us to move people around, there needs to be an open space somewhere. So we'll look into your request and see if we can accommodate it. But just understand that sometimes we just don't have the space to make those changes. Thank you. Um, am I able to pick, uh, put a lock on the drawers that uh, come with the dorm room? Yeah, we don't see it too often, but yes, it is possible. Like a very skinny, almost wire-like bicycle lock but it is possible, yes. It's just you and your roommate that should be able to have access to the room. So it should be nothing really to worry about, but yes, it is possible. Would you please describe storage available in McAllister? I could take this one. So very similar to the furniture that's in upper, um, each resident will have a wardrobe, a dresser that fits under the bed. And then you do have the ability to um, change the height of the bed. So if you want your bed lofted, you can raise it or lower it. Um, so you have the dresser, the wardrobe, and then depending on where you want your bed height to be, we'll determine where if you have any storage containers, if you can place them underneath or if you want to stack them or put them anywhere else inside of the room. Um, like Amanda mentioned, if you go to the YouTube channel, I believe there is a tour of McAllister Res Hall on there as well. So you can see what this room space looks like. Um, if it's not asking a lot, Amanda, could you find that uh, YouTube video and put the link in, uh, in the chat, please? Yes, I can. Thank you. Um, is there a curfew of any kind um, or, or nighttime rules? So there is no curfew. We do not keep track of who comes and goes. So that is um, a, a change for quite a few. Um, as far as when it comes to nighttime rules, so we will work with all incoming students whenever we have the, and it's going to be on the orientation calendar, um, you're going to have a meeting with Residence Life, and we're going to kind of go over some of the big rules that you really need to know and understand, as well as some of the softer ones, depending on the area that you're in. Um, so when it comes to things at night, specifically things like quiet hours and courtesy hours are some of the rules that we will really kind of go into in terms of, you know, quiet hours are hard hours where obviously you, you, nobody should be able to hear you at all. Whereas courtesy hours, those are 24 hours a day. So if I'm sitting right here and I can hear you down the hallway, even if it's three in the afternoon, that's not being courteous to your neighbor. So that's what cur uh, courtesy hours are. So those are really the rules that are kind of in play when it comes to that. But beyond um, uh, the, the noise and stuff like that, as long as you're not really disturbing your neighbor, we don't track who comes and goes as far as the students themselves, like there's no checking in and out. Now our staff is on call, they are doing rounds as our PD, as are the pro staff. So if we see somebody that we haven't seen before in the building, we're gonna be doing something about it. But as far as the students who live here, they're not like a check-in, check-out process. We don't have dead mothers, we don't, we don't have any of that. They're full-fledged adults who need to make smart decisions. That's what we tell them and remind them when they get here, but there is no, curfew, bed check, anything like that. Now, the other caveat I will give to this is, especially with this new opt-in, if the core rules change beyond that, that's not necessarily been brought to our attention yet or in the future, I don't know if that will change because I know certain academies do have curfews depending on if you're in the core or not. So this could be subject to change. I don't know, this is obviously the first year we've done that but at least as far as the housing piece is concerned, we do not have a curfew, nor are we checking any of that. We're just making sure nobody who shouldn't be in the buildings are in the buildings. Thank you. Um, if a student is playing a sport, um, do the club coaches or the sport coaches, co coaches coordinate practices after classes? Amanda is probably happy to share that. Yeah, so I mean, I can, again, this is mainly for soccer, but I would say for the most part, um, your, I wouldn't say your classes go around your practice, but when you build your schedule, you have like a blocked off time that's just for your sport and that's whenever they practice. So you basically can just choose from what's available um, through those times. So it's more like your coach makes your practice at a certain time on certain days and then you kind of build your schedule around that. Most practices are at night and I would say there's not too many night classes except for a few of the engineering ones like welding. Um, but 
for the most part, it's just at night. And most of the classes I would say are during the day. Um, but your coach isn't necessarily like going around every single person, person's classes, if that makes sense. Thank you. Um, this is a multi-part question. Do students need garbage cans or garbage bags? dishes and utensils, irons for uniforms. We already answered printers, cleaning supplies, so. I'll go down the list. So garbage can, garbage bags. Um, you do not need to bring a garbage can. There'll be one for the rooms. Garbage bags, yes, that'll be useful. Um, dishes, utensils, students have meal plans. Um, they're encouraged to eat, you know, the meals of their meal plans. Um, but if you wanna have a little something in your room, yeah, it's wise to have maybe just a couple, not a lot, and make sure you have something that you can have the means to clean it um, easily. Irons for uniforms. Most students do small steamers, like handheld steamers. Um, it's a little bit more fire safe and just having to fold out a whole ironing board is not really practical. Um, printers, completely up to you, but recommend not doing it. Most of the submissions for documents and stuff like that, whether it be a class or what have you, is being submitted online nowadays. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Cleaning supplies, yeah, I would definitely have some small cleaning supplies for your room. Clean up the floor or, yeah, make sure you're bringing laundry detergent, these kinds of things. So you can clean your bedding, clean your clothes, that kind of stuff. But And, yeah, something to wipe down your desk, perhaps. Something to note is we will never, or a custodian will never go into a student's room to clean it for any reason. If maintenance needs to go in there, um, they will do our their best to notify us and the student as well beforehand. Now, if water's pouring through the ceiling, which will never happen here, um, they'll go in and get that address. But beyond that, custodial maintenance, they do not enter rooms. They do not clean any of that. It is a student space entirely. And so they, now they will take care of common areas. So hallways, game rooms, stairwells, all of that custodial will take care of. Um, but yeah, other than that, they're not entering your room to do any kind of cleaning. So it is about yeah. you bring some kind of cleaning materials for your space. So this family is from SoCal and uh, they understand that Vallejo is a little bit cooler. Um, how are the dorms heated and do you recommend Under Armour under their uniforms for the cold days? So the rooms are heated by a sensor outside of the building that kind of regulates everything on the inside. Um, some buildings are just a little bit different than others. I can let Melinda, uh, I can let Amanda explain a little bit more about her time in Upper. Um, I don't necessarily... I think a lot of it more so is just when that sensor starts to trigger and change based on the weather, that's usually the goofy period when it's um, students get a little uncomfortable because when it starts to go into fall or it starts to you know get a little bit warmer, um, the sensor gets kind of wonky until the weather outside stabilizes. So that's usually when we'll get some of the complaints because it's all under one um, centralized air. There's nothing specifically in each room that um, can outline the whole area for the whole building. Um, but I'll let uh, Amanda explain her experiences in Upper for that. Yeah, so um, I would say Upper, the heat and like how cool it is in your room, it honestly just depends which side of the building you are. So if you're on the side with the water, it feels a lot cooler because if you open your window, it's like a swamp cooler just coming right in. It's like you just see it's like natural air conditioner, basically. Um, if you're on the other side, it does get, you know, a little warmer because you don't have that water kind of coming in. But for the most part, I wouldn't say it gets too cold or too hot. But that's again where you can bring in fans, you can bring in. Uh, blankets. I had a lot of blankets all the time. So I kind of did it like that. Um, again, I would say most people are in their room at night. So it's not usually too much of a problem during the day. Everywhere else on campus has like air conditioning or heating, um, which is nice. A lot of people spend time in the library or just other buildings. So you, it's definitely doable, but it really just depends kind of where you are put um, and what side you're facing, I would say. Um, but you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think there are any buildings have like actual heater or actual um like air conditioning so but it's also just old, older buildings and um, you're probably not going to find that at other schools either so um, in terms of the uniform um, wearing under armor could be tricky because you can't have a, a different colored sleeve under your khaki uniform but you could get warmer stuff under your uh, coveralls uh, you will have a, a pretty thick work jacket and a rain jacket so you should be okay but having a couple of Under Armour shirts never hurts 
Yeah, sorry, I didn't actually see that part. Um, yeah, honestly, your like khaki uniform is pretty comfortable for both. You do get a little sweaty when it's hot, but you just don't wear a jacket. Um, the jackets that they provide to you, you have a rain jacket, you have a really thick jacket, you have like a nicer jacket. Honestly, it like fits all of the weather. Um, so when it's colder, you just wear that thicker jacket. When it's raining, you wear that rain jacket. Um, you wear your boots instead of like your baits. It just it just kind of depends. Um, so you, they definitely provide you with what you need for the weather. Uh, we are running um, a little tight on time. Robert, if you wouldn't mind uh, reviewing the uh, recording of this session. And Amanda down below has added a YouTube um, video of the space. So please take a look at that. Um, does each room have its own thermostat? We all covered that. Um, Stephanie had to step away and she's shared her uh, information, if in case you ever want to reach out to her. If a, um, Then I have, sorry if you said this earlier, do the upper res um, common kitchens, uh, does it have common kitchens or cleaning di for cleaning dishes? Yeah, there's a small basic common kitchen. It does have a sink in it. Um, do the room doors use physical key locks? Yes, in upper residence hall, they do. And to access the building itself, you use your port pass, actually, which you just tap and it will let that door open. But to get into your room, you're going to use a physical key. And then if you're in the gallery service hall, you use your port pass as your room key. So you use your port pass to get into the building and you'll use that card for your room in your bathroom. Thank you. Um, for students participating in athletics, um, is a separate sports physical form needed in addition to the student health forms already submitted? If yes, when? Yeah, if you have questions about that, I would definitely ask um, Jeff Ward, who is kind of like the head of that. He's our head trainer. But um, if you are playing a sport, you should have got an email about sportswear that you do all of the information there. Um, I don't think any of the housing people have any information about that. Um, but just from experience, it, there should just be an email about what you have to do. And it pretty much walks you through it. Um, I just put the orientation um, email in there. If you have any specific questions, please send those over to orientation. I'll forward it to the appropriate athletic person, uh, person in athletics. Um, could I take food from the food hall, stick it in a Tupperware and bring it to my room to snack on later? Uh, the official answer to that from the university is no, but... Um, they're not going to tackle you if you're walking out with a cookie, but if they see you loading up stuff, someone, someone's going to stop this simply just because it is uh, whenever you swipe in, it's all you can eat after that. So um, they don't, uh, not super thrilled with people loading up and then walking out with food. That being said, there is discussion on what other options they have. And then we do also have other options on campus outside right. of the dining hall, um, which I'll let Matt talk about that because he comes in with a, a coffee every day from one. Um, but as for the actual large scale dining hall itself, they don't allow you to bring in Tupperware containers to take the food out. Yeah, so, so the other two options are the bistro, which is open from the morning to early afternoon. And that has, you can buy sandwiches for lunch, but primarily like breakfast sandwiches, pastries, coffee, granola bars, these kinds of things, sports drinks. And then in the evenings, um, closer to the market hall where the food place stuff is, uh, there's a place called Moro Cove, and in there, there's almost like a small convenience store. But they also um, have sandwiches, little salads, things of that matter. So those you can freely take to and from. If some students don't want to go into the market hall for whatever reason, you can actually use meal swipes in these other two spaces to take out sandwiches and salads. But yeah, we used to do, I think back in the day, they did a bit of uh, you could take food out, but that was when one swipe was one plate of food. Now it's actually what most students prefer. And that's the having the all you can eat when you can step in. So that's obvious why you can't take stuff out anymore. So the the location Matt's talking about um, in Moral Cove is is pretty much like a grocery store or a convenience store. It has um, top ramen and uh, some of those things, uh, frozen meals that you can bring and leave in your fridge and then eat later, heat them up and eat later. So there's some options there, ice cream bars and fun stuff. Um, how much does laundry cost? Um, I don't know if I remember this correctly. I don't know if it got one up, but uh, we are like housing isn't in charge of the laundry. We actually have like a company that does all of that. So like they kind of choose the prices, but I think drying is 150. Um, and then it depends what mode you put the washer on. It goes from like 
what like 175 to like 250 it just depends um but it's not too bad as long as if you're washing your clothes like once a week you're probably spending five bucks at most i haven't been given any paperwork that says any prices are going up for laundry yet so that should be the same do we serve chocolate milk anywhere yes um you make it though they have chocolate syrup and they have every Every kind of milk you can think of, so you just mix it. Also, chocolate muscle milk. Oh. All right. Um, we have five minutes to go, and as always, um, families, if there um, is anyone who couldn't put their question in chat, um, please go ahead and unmute and ask your question, and um, our presenters will be happy to answer. Uh, do any of the eateries make smoothies? Um, they do for breakfast um, in our like main cafeteria. At least when I went for breakfast, they usually had smoothies. Um, but there's also like the naked like smoothies that you can get. Um, and there's at the two different stores that we have. So if smoothies are your thing, they do have them. Thank you. Um, I have to make a plug. Uh, if you are, if you can, please check with your student um, whether they've turned in their photograph or the port pass the ID that we need to provide um, when you come in on the 17th and also uh, check with them that they've provided us with their uniform sizing because um, for them to be able to get their appropriate uniform that needs to be completed. Uh, every, um, every time we meet, I make that request. I hope you're talking with your students and helping us out. Um, I also uh, want to talk about registration just as a quick touch um, we are evaluating your transcripts um, right now and enrolling students in block registering students in their courses um, so your student doesn't need to be worried about um, enrolling for their own classes the campus takes care of it as soon as that is complete there will be um, bills that will be accurate and completed and sent out to your student and maybe you if you've signed up for it so that you can make uh, your payments. Uh, bills were due today uh, originally, but with all the delays um, from, from, FAPS, from FAFSA, uh, we have extended that to August 16th. So there will be no late charges between now and the 16th. As your student receives those, uh, receive th their uh, accurate bills, please make an attempt to uh, pay, but until you get that email, it's okay. Just hang tight and thank you for your patience with that. Um, Joseph, I uh, please send. Me, yes, I have. I have your. I have your photo. I remember you asked me last time. I checked and I have it. Um, all right, that's all we had um, for today. I want to thank uh, each and every one of you for being here this evening, especially Amanda. It was just uh, such a treat to see you. Um, and I see that you are coming back to Calmar time to do your master's. So welcome back already. Um, thank you, everyone. Tim, Matt, and Melinda. Um, thank you, all the families who joined us. Uh, we will see you on Monday. So remember, next week is uh, slightly off schedule. Monday and Tuesday, we'll see you on Monday, and we will be talking about academics. Uh, have a wonderful evening. I will stay for just five more minutes if anyone wants to stay behind and ask anything that's unrelated to ResLife. Um, ResLife colleagues, thank you and have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. All right, can cadets carry a pocket knife? Um, if they are in a major that requires them to have that as a tool, there are specifics about the kind of knife they ought to uh, be bringing that is explained to them in when they when they take the appropriate course. So um, just know that they will be able to have one. The exact kind and stuff uh, is wait for your classes to begin, just like you would for your uh, for your um, books and other supplies. Um, is McAllister a far walk to classes? It kind of is, but it's only, um, I don't know, 350 stairs away, which drops you from McAllister, drops you into the core of the campus. 
and um, your students will become very good at tra traversing those stairs. Um, but if they walk around, it's it's uh, a bit of a walk, yes. How can I confirm my student completed their uniform sizing? Uh, please ask them. They should know. They would have had to um, go into a, a form, depending on being a cadet or being a traditional student, and they would have had to give some serious sizing information, which I believe they would need to, their family or parents help uh, to put together. But please check with them. Uh, if they don't know and you still need to know more, send me an email um, to orientation at csum.edu and I can go into those uh, into those uh, spreadsheets and, and help out. Can student bring a bike? Absolutely. Highly recommended. Bring a bike, electric bike, regular bike. Um, our students get around uh, much easily uh, when they have one of those things. Um, are specific shoes a part of the uniform? Yes, uh, you will be issued, if you are in the core, you will be issued a black, a pair of black Oxfords, which you're required to wear with your khakis. And uh, on the uniform information page uh, on our website, there is a, um, there are a couple of options. You have to buy your own steel-toed boots uh, that you will need for being on the ship or in some labs or in your welding class. So look out for bringing that boot, the, the pair of boots on your own, but you will have a uh, a pair of black Oxfords that you'll be required to wear. If you're a traditional student, there is no footwear requirement. You can wear whatever you want. Um, so can I put padding inside if it doesn't affect appearance? Inside what? Your shoes? Yes, you may do that. Uh, are composite plastic boots okay? Or do they have to be a steel toe? Steel toe, steel toe, no no um, exceptions on the steel toe. Please make sure you have one of those. Uh, essentially turning the, not, <laughs> if it's not visible, it looks, and if it looks like your black leather Oxfords, you're fine, JP. Anything else? All right, it looks like we've exhausted questions. Uh, I look forward to seeing all of you back on uh, Monday. Until then, have a nice evening and a wonderful weekend. We're counting the days to see you. Bye-bye.